Welcome back. This next video we're going to be doing some work on the skull. This is what we call the cranial sutural spread. And it's where I use my fingers, my thumbs, to work on the skull plates where they come together. We call those sutures. So this is the frontal bone under my hand, the forehead. Of course that's the frontal bone. And these two bones on the top of the head, they're called the parietal bones. So where they meet, the frontal bone, that's called the coronal suture. We're going to be working to loosen this up on the patient. And then I'll be working on what we call the, the mid-sagittal, which again is just right down the top of your head. So first thing I'm going to do is work on the coronal suture where the frontal meets the two parietals. And this would be where the soft spot was when you were a baby. So I'm going to put my fingers here, my thumbs, and I'm going to slowly pull them apart with a little bit of pressure, a slight amount of pressure. Now I'm going to exaggerate what I'm doing. I'm pulling this kind of like an X as if I was trying to separate the suture. So I'm pulling it diagonal this way, diagonal that way, and then straight across so that it's almost like an asterisk. So using a slight amount of pressure to pull, to pull it apart, and pull it again, and then I move over maybe a millimeter or two, and I repeat the same process. Now some people actually fall asleep while I'm doing this and other people say, ow, that's sore. They want to know, is it sore on everybody? Well, if your skull plates are unlocked, this isn't going to hurt. But the more compressed they are, then the more this could be sore. So I'm just working along the coronal suture Again, using my thumbs, and I kind of started in the midline where the soft spot would be on the patient's head when they were small. Now I'm going to work the same suture line going on the other side of the skull. And I'm just using a slight amount of pressure to pull these apart. And people ask me, patients want to know, Dr. McCarty, can you actually feel the skull plates moving when you're doing this? And the answer is no. I cannot actually feel them moving while I'm doing this. But I am able to measure before and after as to how well the skull is moving. When we first start out doing this work, the patient's head is going to feel almost like a rock. It won't feel very flexible at all. And as we go further along and get more movement, it seems to have more give. So now we've just worked across the midline, right across the what's called the coronal suture, where the frontal bone is. Now I'm going to work down the middle of the skull, doing exactly the same type of thing except following the suture line of the mid-sagittal, which is right on the top of the head. Now, these sutures are very important because of several reasons. Number one, right underneath the, the uh, mid-sagittal suture is very important for the cerebral spinal fluid because this is where the cerebral spinal fluid gets reabsorbed by the brain. And when this area, when the suture is not moving properly, when, it's, when these sutures, they come together, I'm going to exaggerate a little bit. When you breathe, the skull plates expand because oxygen went into the sinuses, and when you breathe out, they compress. So it's breathing in and out. 
It's really more like this. Breathe in and breathe out. And breathe in and breathe out. And what happens is these skull plates, because of injuries and stress, get torqued. And then the restriction occurs. The movement here is quite easy to occur, but whenever it gets torqued, it's very restricted. And I'm working on taking the torque out so that we can get the movement back in. So I'm going to again work on this midline with my thumbs, applying a little bit more pressure than what you would use, say, to put pressure on your eyeballs. And some people say that it hurts, and other people say that it feels real good. So, like I said, I'm pulling apart in one direction, like an X, and then an X in the other direction, and then straight across. Then I'm moving my fingers down a millimeter, a centimeter, and I just keep repeating the process. And this area, like I said, is very important because there are, this is the area where the cerebral spinal fluid is reabsorbed by the brain. Now research shows that the dura, which is, maybe you've heard of the meninges. The meninges is like inflammation of the meninges is what we call meningitis. There are three layers of the meninges, and they're like three layers of saran wrap, and they line the inside of the skull and they protect the brain. So you have the dura matter, the arachnoid matter, and the pia matter. There are the three layers, and think of them like three layers of saran wrap with the spinal fluid flowing in between. And so the spinal fluid keeps the dura, the arachnoid, and the pia all separated, and they protect the brain, and they hydrate the brain. Now, the dura comes from Latin for durable, meaning tough. Arachnoid deal means like spider-like or spider-web-like, and it looks kind of like Swiss cheese. And then the pia, again, is the inside layer, and the spinal fluid flows in between those layers. Now, those layers of meninges attach, the dura attaches inside of the skull. And as it attaches inside the skull, there are blood vessels and there are nerves. And the dura actually comes through these skull plates, through the sutures, and forms the skin on the top of the head. And the research has shown that the same skin on top of your head is made from the same material that the dura is made from inside the head and that the blood vessels and the nerves also go through these sutures. So even though I'm working on the outside of the head, the nerves are actually carrying stretch signals to the inside of the head. So I can't reach inside the head with my fingers, but I can still affect what's going on with these sutures, and I can affect what's going on on the meninges, on the dura, inside the skull. Now the inside of the skull is lined with this dura matter, which like I said means tough matter. And it lines the inside of the skull, and it connects on every nerve root as it goes down the body, all the way down to the tailbone. So the dura goes from the skull and it connects all the way to the tailbone. And the spinal fluid goes all the way down. So it's very, very important. This dura, what you'll hear me talk about dural torque, and that's a torque that happens from the head all the way to the tailbone, and it's almost like somebody's twisting a towel as if they're trying to wring water out of it. So what we've done right now is we've worked along the coronal suture, down the